Good morning. morning. Happy Tuesday, you guys. And welcome to the show. Double fisting on a Tuesday? Yep. All right. It's Taco Tuesday. It's it's Tasty Tuesday. It is Tenacious Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Today it's is Tuesday? the day Tuesday. Tuesday. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good morning. There was something that I wanted to share. There was some kind of message that I had, and I don't remember. But it was good. Oh, yes, it is. Because you know why I was thinking about this just a couple minutes ago before we started this video that I'm very grateful for you. I'm very grateful for you because what I was thinking about is I thought to myself, self, you have a shit ton of calls today. And some days I don't really feel like talking to people. I think that's like a normal human thing. Like mm -hmm. sometimes we just don't want to talk to people. Yeah. <clears throat> and I thought to myself, hmm, self, I would rather have so many people to talk to than nobody to talk to. So I'm grateful for you. I immediately then thought to myself, I'm excited. I'm excited to talk to our people. Mm -hmm. You are our people. Party people! And I thought about, I'm grateful for you because if you guys didn't show up, I would just keep talking to myself like I have been for 35 years. But how old am I? You're not 30. 34 yet. years. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't even matter. I would just keep talking to myself and I only have so much room to hear the same shit that I've already heard myself say over and over again. Mm. So I'm grateful for you guys. Thanks for being here this morning. Anyways, we are grateful for you today. And you know what the lesson is for us all is it kind of goes along the same lines of when you have so many things to do, you're like, ah, I have so many things to do, which I would rather have so many things to do than nothing. Because then you just get into trouble and you get bored. So today, be grateful for all the shit you have to do. Amen. And all the responsibilities that you have. That means you're alive and that means that you are doing things and that you are important. Yes. Great. Let's carry on. Today is... Oh, you didn't tell me, sir. Do you guys want to see my burn zone dance? A bunch of you guys. Shout out to Beth Lewis. I hey, see make you. a funny face so that Stacy can get a good uh, screen grab. Here you go, Stacy. Okay, there we go. Uh, shout out to Beth Lewis. A bunch of you guys are are coming into the undergrad Ooh, training. Club. Yes. Congratulations. But. Um, if you're in the underground training club and you're done with the burn zone and the dances don't happen as often because we breathe harder, um, <laughs> and lift a lot stronger, then you have to like dance in between then, full sections. Then here's a move that I know you've missed. Everybody, come on now. I know you're at work at your computer. <laughs> your coworkers are like, you're going to call it the Saricha. <laughs> what is that? It's the Sarit Shuffle, don't you know? <laughs> I'm a slap mosquitoes everywhere. Okay, all right, let's get into it. Oh my gosh. Okay, question number one today is coming from Daisy all the way from Colorado. What difference does working out with resistance bands versus free weights have on your muscles? I know free weights build muscles. But do resistant bands build muscles as well as do they only tone your muscles? She's, get she's manifesting greatness by saying her name is Daisy the Great. I love that. Manifesting greatness. 
Okay, again, what is the diff what difference does working out with resistance bands versus free weights have on the muscles? I know free weights build muscles, but do resistance bands build muscles as well, or do they only tone your muscles? This is a great question, actually. Yeah, so, you know... The I must look up a definition. I wonder if you're looking for the definition of the word that I'm about to say. So, the, the difference between dumbbells and resistance bands is honestly the stimulus. It's a different stimulus... Um, you guys, whether you're toning your muscles or building them, like it's the same thing. The, the, the bigger your muscles are, the more toned you look, the less toned you look, the less muscles you have. Okay. So when you're saying I want to look toned, basically what that means is that you want to have bigger muscles and you also want to lose fat. Um, but in order for you to grow your muscles, what you need is you need to tear them down. Okay, which means that both dumbbells and resist resistance bands are effective um, because they will both create that time under tension, which will tear your muscles down, which will help it to grow. Um, but it's a different stimulus. You know, it's like saying, which is a better chest exercise, push-ups or bench press? They're both important. It's just a different stimulus. One is a body weight stimulus. The other one is a weighted stimulus or, you know, um, which is a better stimulus, um, dumbbell chest press or, um, you know, or, or, or barbell bench press. They're both important. It's a different stimulus, you know, in our opinion from, you know, the methodologies that we use to train is you want to have stimulus and time under tension from all like in for all different muscles in all different forms and the way we see it is that it's it's equally as important so like whether you do like let's say bicep curls with a resistance band or a dumbbell it doesn't really matter it's just a stimulus so you know just the point is if you want to look more toned or get stronger just you know, put in the work to get that time under tension. Once you get the time under tension, which basically means do more reps, be more consistent with your reps, do negative with your reps, um, then you'll be able to stimulate your muscles with more time under tension, which will allow them to t be torn down. And mm -hmm. as a default, they will be rebuilt. Of course, if you incorporate proper nutrition as well. It is possible to tear your muscles down and to not look more toned. If your nutrition and your regeneration is out of whack, then you can train all day long, but you're not going to see a difference. And this is why you guys, with the way that we teach, it's different too. It's not just training. It's not just nutrition. It is the entire 360. It is how you think. It is how you move. It is how you eat. It is how you recover, what you do to all of that, because all of it is equally as important. It's not one or the other. It's, it's the entire thing that you have to pay close attention to. So that is my response to that. I hope that was helpful. I okay. definitely have a response. Do you see my skills? Yes. Okay. Looks like Boogie wrote it. Boogie did write it, we're going to say. Boogie wrote it. He's really good at writing things backwards so that uh, they can see with the current camera situation that we have here. So uh, did, I was that kid in, in high school. There was always one of these kids, and maybe you were one of these kids. The, well, technically, kid. Technically, and then people were like, technically, shut up. Anyways, technically, muscle tone is the muscle's readiness to respond to an outside force. We think of muscle tone as a visual, as a look. I want to I wanna look toned. Tone is like how prepared is your muscle at all moments to fire when needed. Attacks me. And when you are used, like everybody likes looking at this specimen, um, mm. exhibit A. My armpits. <laughs> Just <'cause> I... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. This is amazing. <laughs> Hold on, close your arm. Hold on, close your arm. <laughs> Stop. This is embarrassing. Today, okay. come on, it's gonna okay. grab so much attention. Stacy, attention! <laughs> <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Do you lift weights, bro? <laughs> anyways. Do you have a petting zoo? Anyways, my muscles are really awesome, but since I have a sweatshirt on, we'll show Sarit's arms. <laughs> But because Sari is so used to lifting, her muscles are so conditioned to lifting weights that they're prepared to uh, they're prepared to contract or stretch when any kind of uh, stimulus that's necessary for her to have an op equal or opposite reaction do. So there's a certain look because her muscles are already partially contracted because they're ready to go. So that is the muscle tone, okay, is defined as the tension in a muscle at rest. If you're not used to using your muscles intentionally, intention is what we talked about yesterday. If you're not used to using your muscles intentionally, then they look flat. And if you don't have enough muscles, there is not enough tension. And, and so I wrote something... We're going to reveal part one here. Let's see. Where is it at? There it is. Look, I wrote it backwards oh. for you guys. Whoa, easy now. Tone equals muscle readiness. Oh, wow. You, and Boogie spelled it too. And Boogie spelled it's really great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you guys, we don't have to, to be a spelling bee winner what did I in spell order wrong? to change lives. Readiness. Yeah, great. I don't give a shit. Okay, you know what it means. Number two is building muscles equals growth, which is what Sarit was talking about with um, Time having under to attention. Yeah, break your muscles down, create little micro tears. And then what happens in recovery with proteins is that those tears get filled in, then the muscle is then actually larger because we have filled in the tears. Okay. Okay. So then Def defined. Do you hear? Yeah, he's he crying he's, from outside. He's crying from outside at a squirrel, I'm sure. Um, but definition is like the visual that we're thinking about. And definition comes by creating muscle growth and tone while reducing body fat which is what Sarit's talking about when she says nutrition and regeneration or nutrition and recovery, repair, sleeping, eating well, hydrating well. Um, and so you've got to have the combination of I lift so that I, I break my muscles down, I'm gaining muscle, I'm making them larger. Um, and by that, they're going to also get toned. But if you're eating like an asshole or um, not paying attention to that or recovering well, then there's there's a certain amount of like just flatness that is gonna be the appearance. Or softness. Yeah, so um, going back to Daisy's question, weights versus resistance bands, you can actually create a similar stimulus with both. Mm -hmm. it just depends on how you do the exercise. So if all you have is resistance bands, you know, um, negatives are amazing for building muscle. So for example, if you have a resistance band, let's say you're, we're gonna give a full, let's say you're, you're standing on the resistance band with your feet and you're holding it and you're doing curls. The negative part would be this. And the goal is to create as much resistance as you can within that negative is going to give you a similar stimulus as with dumbbells. So um, really just depends on how you're doing the movement, but they can both be equally as effective. It just depends on how they're used. Yeah, and one more thing to add in, to add to that. There is three different ways in which you can contract your muscles. Oh. Okay, so this is basically like human physiology, like advanced human physiology. Um, it's called concentric contractions, eccentric and isometric. Concentric basically means that the joint is being flexed. Shortened. Shortened, Yeah. yes. Flex the angle, the angle is decreasing. Eccentric means that 
the joint is extending and that's how you're creating tension. So that's basically like any negatives. And then there is isometric where you're not changing the angle of the joint. For like example, a plank. a plank. Yeah. Okay. So you can stimulate the, your, mus your muscular contractions from a few different angles. And in the burn zone and the underground training club, we focus on all three. And this is you, how you, why and how you become a more functional human being. And why people can just go to the gym and do bicep curls all day and still like have their biceps not look great, not be strong or anything because they're only stimulating their muscle tissue in one way, which is called basically like a concentric um, stimulation when ideally you want to focus on everything. That's why we tell you guys, look, when it comes to training, just do what we say. Just do what we say with regards to anything like body related. Like there is a rhyme and a reason for everything that we do. And we teach you, we take away all the yes work. All you have to do is just show up. Do, do what we say as long as you feel like it fits with your, your goals, your purpose, your lifestyle. Um, and by the way, if you have any questions with regards to any of our training programs, do us a favor and just email admin at erinandsari.com. And based on... Thank you, Stacy. And based on what is your current um, training experience or training level, we will guide you to the right program for you. Um, <clears throat> the easy way to think about a negative, because you can, there's a negative in, in every, every movement, right? It is typically the easier part of the movement. Be, and, and the reason why that builds more muscle <clears throat> is because typically you can handle a heavier load in that contraction. For example, going back to the dumbbell bicep curl, it is more difficult to curl the weights up to your shoulders than it is to control lowering them down. You can, you can handle more load on the lowering part of that for a pull up. The harder part is the pulling up. The easier part is the lowering down. So that would be the negative part of it for a squat. Lowering down into the squat is the easier part of that movement pushing up out of the squat is is the the concentric contraction the the actual like mm -hmm. i've got to do more work to get this thing to go back up basically mm -hmm. one is control the other is uh power and strength mm -hmm. yeah yep Ooh, that was a lot that was a lot hope that helped Okie dokie, next. I like that she said upstate. She's like, because here's the thing. When people, when you say that you're from New York, everybody thinks you're from NYC. the city, which is a small part of a massive state. Um, Shauna Falkerson from upstate New York. Shout out to all of our inner circle peeps coming up with questions. You guys are really showing up. Mm -hmm. Also, that just shows that the more invested you are and the more you show up and the more present you are and the more you reach out and the more visible you make yourself and the more you communicate and the more you engage, the more successful you are. Mm -hmm. Period, hands down, without a doubt, all the time, 100% of the time. Amen. So if you're catching this video on like a one-off Oh, just randomly caught them live or for some reason, I don't know, YouTube showed me this video and you haven't been plugging in to the community, you haven't been invested in any programs, Plug. go now, do something. You'll have more success. Stretching. I do not stretch hardly at all. Okay, I never stretch. <laughs> I, I love how like you're just like getting to the real truth like as you're writing this. That's a difficult thing to yeah. do. Uh, would you so many people, I eat pretty healthy, like, but really I know, I know the secret. Would you suggest Romwad as a purchase stretching program or just general stretching right after your workout be just beneficial to getting swole and flexy? Also, when do you two stretch out? Early morning, before bed, lunchtime with Boogie? Thanks. This is a great question. And now I want to partner with Romwad. I actually think that it's a really great program. Is it absolutely 100% necessary? No. 
but it is something that if you're paying for and you have something to simply follow, like a lot of, you know, our, our, the reason that we struggle to get to the, the destination or to a checkpoint or closer to our goals is because we don't know what to do. And sometimes just having a visual of somebody doing it at the same time is so much easier, like burn zone. Like, oh, I don't know what this movement is. Oh, let me just look up at the TV. Oh, they're doing that. Okay, cool, easy. I don't have to think about it. So you can follow what they're doing. And I think that that is a huge benefit of Ram mm -hmm. Um It's it's the accountability portion, right? Sure. It's just like the burn zone of stretching, basically. Yeah, 100%. Um, so there is somebody doing it there with you. And I think, yeah, I'm not really sure how that works um, i think there's progressions in it too you know when it comes to stretching consistency is key so if you need like a video format and you need to be financially invested in order to show up for something then i would say that that's actually a great start yeah we should definitely connect with them and see if we can partner with them Lunch but time. Um, you know, but for us, stretching is crucial. You guys like, again, like if you're not stretching your muscles, you're not giving it enough stimulus so that when it needs to fire, it's going to be, um, to be able to handle that tension. I personally, I'm very immobile by nature and I've hated stretching for the longest time. So I think it was two years ago, I've created a habit because I could tell, I could tell that, you know, at that point I was just like 30 years old and like, shit, dude, like you love lifting. Like what's going to happen when you're 60? Like you won't be able to lift at the rate you're going. So it, like I was just, you know, I was like, okay, I'm hitting a crossroads. So I, I told myself, I'm like, okay, you're going to need to make a commitment to stretching and you know, at, at first there is resistance and like try different methods. So like, I remember on Thursdays we'll go and we'll do like yoga. Mm -hmm. Um, when I lived in Jersey, there was an amazing yoga teacher that I would go and see. His name is John. I don't know if you are ever watching this John, but if you are a huge shout out to you because you got me to respect yoga. Like when you're, when you appreciate the going hard element, and then you have to slow down. You're like, this is fucking bullshit. I want to burn calories. <laughs> but John just had this rhyme and reason. So I really think that it's really important, like who you connect with. Um, and I connected very well with him. So I started showing up for that. But I'm like, man, like at that point, I, you know, like I was training, like, let's say at least. Oh, I was also going through a time in my life where I wasn't doing much other than training. We can talk about that on a later day, but I was training a lot, like 10 hours per week, probably. And like for every 10 hours of training, I would give myself maybe one hour of stretching. And I like my body just kept on, I got stronger, but I kept on getting stiffer and I could just tell that an injury was coming. And then when we moved in together, you know, like we, we moved to California and, we, you know, I was like, okay, I had this great instructor. Now I need to find a new instructor. And we tried going to these different yoga studios on Thursday, still just doing basically like one day out of the week dedicated to, to, to stretching. And it still, it wasn't enough. And also I couldn't connect with anybody um, but you know, the, re the reality is, is that I wasn't yet fully committed to stretching, like just being like fully transparent. And then one day I just, I kind of like had a come to Jesus moment. I was ready to change my habit and I told myself, okay, you can either try to, you know, continue to search for like this amazing yoga teacher, which I'm not sure if you'll ever come across, um, that would fit in alignment with your schedule and blah, 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 which just takes too many elements, or you can just start committing a small segment of time every single day to stretching. So I was like, all right, well, I know that 
to me, my morning routine is an absolute non-negotiable and it is gold. Um, I'm completely unplugged from the world. Nobody can get a hold of me and it's just my me time where I do the most important things. So I said, all right, what if I now start my day every single day by stretching? And I did. And I got to tell you guys, I've been consistent every day since. And it is now a non-negotiable habit. And every single day I stretch for about 10 minutes. And I got to tell you, like, I've been feeling great since. Actually, somebody just asked us, how are you guys feeling injury-wise? And both of us were like, great. We don't have any. Yeah. We feel great. We feel great. And we're training hard. Yeah, my back is stiff every morning when I wake up. Last year but, when we recorded the burn zones too, it's like every day we did two workouts because we did our own workouts and the burn zones and like... I, I wasn't at that point because it was a lot for my back. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Um, there was one thing that you said that I like got stuck on for a minute and it's like, and you said naturally you are less flexible. I'm going to challenge that and I disagree because when you come out as a baby... Granted, your sure. your bones are not all the way fully grown, so sure. there's more um, cartilage and, and connective tissue in there that's like moldable, right? And foldable. Um, however, you guys, like every kid, every kid can squat their ass to the grass. Yes. Every kid, every single kid, show me a child that cannot. Yes, but when I say naturally, I mean from my 20s. And that is do you not natural. Like it's lifestyle related okay. habits. Okay. Yes, it's, it's lifestyle true. related. Use it or lose it. Yes, there are some people I believe genetically are naturally more flexible. There are some people who if they don't stretch at all, they'll be able to touch their toes. I will, I will, I will agree with that. However, a lot of that is learned behavior. If you go to the gym and all you do is half reps all the time, guess what? Your muscles are gonna be only used to moving in half of a range of motion. So when you try to go past that, you're gonna struggle because you've taught your muscles only to move into a certain degree. If all you do is sit down in a chair and sit at a computer all the time and then stand up, you're, you won't be able to have the core strength or ability to do an actual squat without leaning all the way forward, your hips being tight, your butt being uh, weak because it's, uh, longer than its optimal length. Um, like a lot of these things, it's use it or lose it. Yes, I 100% agree with you. And you and with tennis did a lot of boom forward, boom forward, boom forward. Same arms. Nev same I never stretched. Tennis. Never stretched. I, I, uh, and then you had shoulder century, and you had shoulder problems. Right, like 21st century lifestyle, like sat on a chair a lot, you know, like growing up throughout school with all the majors that I had, whatever, whatever. Also, I truly believe that the more stress you have in your life, the more tension you carry in your 100%, 100%. body and the more immobile it, it makes you. And this is not for me to say, oh, woe is me, but I've been through some shit. Um, it, yeah. some things that are not as common. And I really think that those experiences too have led to more compression. Aside from the fact that for my entire life until two years ago, I've been extremely resistant to any form of stretching or mobility whatsoever. Mm -hmm. So I go 30 years into my life, like having, having not made it a priority. It's almost like somebody starting to train for the first time when they're 30 years old. Like, yes, it's gonna take you more time than let's say if somebody starts to train when they're in their 20s or 18. Yeah, I think that well, I first started doing <clears throat> like weight training in high school because we had a weights class. That was, I don't even wanna look back into that to see what kind of things we were doing. But then when I actually intentionally, voluntarily put myself in that like, um, you know, resistance training, fitness training position, it was, um, I, I immediately started doing it with a personal trainer when I was like 20 years old. So at age 20, you know, I believe a lot of the reason I'm able to move in positions that you struggle with is because I was taught full range of motion, lift in full range of motion. Now there's always a time and a place for everything and to not do that. But 
I was taught just good habits, good quality habits where when you do a bench press, bring the bar all like you should be able to not that you have to do this all the time but you should be able to move weight in a full range of motion when you squat you should be able to get your hip crease below your knee below your knee joint um and i think that because i was taught that and i did that in different ways like uh, bulgarian split squats and lunges you know knee to the ground not like don't slam your knee on the ground for fitness, but you know, go in that full range of motion, um, doing uh, box step ups that were like relatively high, getting your legs to move in that full range of motion is huge. When you do deadlifts, do even like, um, what's it called? Deficit deadlifts, mm -hmm. where you're actually standing on a box, like now you have to have the core control to be able to keep your back in a safe position to do deficit deadlifts because your feet are elevated above floor level and you're actually going deeper. If you're just rounding your back, that's going to not feel good after a while. But um, even doing that, even rounding your back, you should be able to do it. If your body moves in that direction, you should be able to move in that direction. Just I wouldn't recommend loading up 200 pounds on a bar and doing a rounded back deadlift. Right, like that's something if you're wanting to stretch, great, grab a really light weight and stretch like that, like with the back rounded. But you know, it's, um, I think that a lot of this is just consistency and full range of motion. Um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna point out a certain demographic of people right now because historically have spent a lot of time in a squat position, Asians. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go look up Olympic weightlifting. They still do. Um, I had a client who went to China. This is not, said, this by the way, is not a racist conversation. Th this is a, a fact. demographic. It's a, fact. It's a cultural people. thing. It, yes. <laughs> and when they're waiting on the bus, they're in a squat position. They just chill there. Just chill. <laughs> Meanwhile, when we did like a one minute squat hold in the burn zone, like you saw us like basically like ready to die i would sit like that when i when my clients would be doing something low to the floor like if they were planking or doing bird dogs or or dead bugs or something i would sit like that it's a comfortable position there's no wonder why kids sit like that too do kids sit like that Boom. it's the concept of use it or lose it once again right yeah. like if if you're sitting in that position for a long time you get comfortable in it but if you don't then it's not comfortable. And I will take full responsibility and ownership and say that to me, it's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. Because with my lifestyle, I, I'm not, you know, like carrying out meetings in the fucking squat position. I mean, I might as well just, you know, do it in a sauna, shit. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's all about priorities. Take it or leave it. Preferences, you know, knowing what matters to you. And, you know, just investing your, your time, your energy, and your money with, with regards to what matters. All right. We'll take one more question. Shauna, thank you so much for that. These and Daisy, both these questions. Yeah, like, they're great. There's so much extra we can go into with these. Love these awesome. training questions. Uh, okay, Daniela, this is going to be our last question for the day. When is it counter in Northern Ireland, I must say. Thank you for being here. Uh, when is it counterproductive to work out? I have been, I haven't been feeling well lately with some flu like symptoms. Should I still push through and continue my workouts or would it be best to let my body rest in this case? Thanks in advance, ladies. You're welcome in advance. All right. This is good. This is good. This is a conversation this is that great. I had with a bunch of you guys. Lately. I want to ask a question yeah. first. How many times have you felt um, like a like a like like you're making excuses um, or or you're listening to your little bitch voice if you don't do your workout because you're like not feeling well? How many times are you like, ah, oh, but I gotta work out or I'm just being a little bitch? I've thought that before. I've been like completely exhausted, body hurts, not feeling well. But still in my I'm mind, Friday, somehow, but in my mind, somehow still, I'm like, you're a little bitch if you don't work out. Mm -hmm. How do you like 
figure out like where's the line, you know, versus like I'm making excuses and like no legitimately this is probably counterproductive. Like where's the line? So here are my like if you're in this situation, it's best to not work out just for the sake of long-term discipline and also um, just the longevity of your training in general, okay? So you're talking about being sick. Being sick is definitely one of them. I know that a bunch of you guys over the past couple of months got COVID and you know you were all frustrated you're like i really want to work out should i work out and i told each and every one of you guys don't chill pump the brakes you guys when you are sick <laughs> your number one priority is to recover the longer it's going to take you to recover the more compromised your entire life is going to be your work your workouts how you show up for yourself, how you show up for your kids. So it's like, would you rather skip three days of the gym and let your body recover than elongate the recovery process and show up for the gym like half, half halfway for like 20 days? Yeah. So you have to think about the long-term rewards. So when you're sick, your number one priority is to recover. Look, you guys, training is adding a strain on your body okay so, so so if you're already in a compromised position and now you're like okay i'm going to add an added strain then it's only going to elongate the recovery process and this is why when you're sick you should not work out however if you have a cold or something it is it is awesome like maybe if you take yourself to the sauna of course if you're not um what's the word when you can infect somebody else not congestive, con, con. Congested? Con. Contagious. Oh. If you're contagious, don't go to a sauna. If you have sauna at home like Taylor Richardson, then great, you're winning. Just take yourself to the sauna, like sweat a lot, um, drink a lot, get lots of sleep. Okay, sleep is especially king when you're, when you're sick. Okay. Secondly, guilt. If you can, I go back to this before we oh, go yeah, on yeah, to yeah. the mental part of this. So, uh, back to the physical part. Like, your immune system is meant to work for you, and when you are sick, like when you are actually feeling like you know, fluey, cold, sweaty, uh, you know, nauseated, like ex full exhaustion, like things like this, like your immune system is working really hard to improve your internal physical state. Um, and when you work out and you put another stimulus on it, you're giving whatever you know virus or illness you have, you're giving it the upper hand, right? You're telling, you're telling your body, uh, you're making it fight for, do I want to recover from my, my workout and add exhaustion more to the mix? Or do I want to push this aside for a second and allow my body to take this, uh, take care of this situation? And when you work out, this, like the, the illness stays for a prolonged period of time mm -hmm. because you've given your body more things to try to recover from when its main focus is trying to recover from the illness. So what happens is then you're like doing half-ass work for a much longer period of time when you could just fully rest for a few days and then be able to get back to it. And if you think about your life and you know just the number of years that you've lived so far, what's three days? What's four days? Shit, what's a week or two weeks? Like, yeah, I don't want to go that long, of course. No, I don't think any of us want to go that long without working out. But if you think about the big picture, that's nothing in comparison to like the quality of the rest of my life. So mentally, you can think about it that way. So that, that transitioning into like the guilt, that's the way that I think about it is like, hey, you know what? A few days of my life, 
mean is is like a a little grain of sand on the whole beach. It's really insignificant in the big picture. So that's how I talk myself through it or like it's better for me to be doing this right now. Let me accept it. Let me surrender to it. Let me embrace it. Let me fully just stop doing shit. Fully. And allow my body and focus all of the energy that I have on getting better. Rather than splitting the energy, let me half try to get better, half make it harder for me to get better. Mm -hmm. um, however, we don't get sick often. Yeah, no, we don't. The last time we were sick was right before everybody knew about COVID. I think that we had it because you got it, I got it, you got it, like, again, bad. The person that was living with us got it. Whatever it was, it's not confirmed. But it was like bang, 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 all in the chest, dead for like a few days. Mm -hmm. Taken out week. fully. Like, mm -hmm. um, that was uh, last January. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so when you're sick, that's rule number one. Rule number two is guilt, you guys, because it's the energy that you put into something is what you're going to end up getting out of it, okay? Um, energy from a metaphysical standpoint. If you're going into a workout with guilt, then what you're going to get out of it is going to be negative, okay? Look, working out for us, the intention of working out is a celebration for what our body can do. Okay, just like with eating, the purpose of eating is to fuel ourselves. Now, if we start to train ourselves to associate working out with guilt and shaming, that's like most people associating food with stress. So it's the intention that goes into it, the symbolism of something that will determine what you get out of it. So if you start giving your brain patterns of, oh, when I eat like shit, I go to work out, then you're gonna continue to feed the beast, which will take you into like a loophole that's gonna take you months and maybe even years to get out of. Um, and it shouldn't be that way. Like intentional, sustainable training has everything to do with celebrating your body for what it's capable to do today and challenging it to, to be better for tomorrow. Just like with eating. Nobody should eat anything. Nobody should eat ice cream or a brownie because they're stressed out. Now, if you're eating it because you're celebrating something amazing in your life, then that's more power to you. And that's where people are misaligned. They go into things in life living unintentionally or not going into it with the right intention or going into it with a negative intention. And then they start developing patterns. Um, um, they said something really good though <clears throat> for most people. And I think this is no longer a concern for us, which is why we haven't thought about it or mentioned it. So I'm really glad that, that I saw this comment. Um, but the fear in losing momentum because you just started, right? So like the people who have only maybe started their fitness journey within the last few months, somewhere less than, you know, three, four months, it's like, I'm just starting to feel some kind of momentum. And now if I have to stop, I have this fear of like, if I stop now, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to go back to my old ways. Uh, they recognize the vulnerability in infancy in their, um, part of their journey. And this is great. You can always go for a walk. 
you can always still be intentional about some kind of where it's really just in your mind. You're like, this is my workout for the day. It makes sense. I, I hear you guys. I totally understand where you're coming from, but this is why I will always say never go through it alone. You guys don't try to go on this journey by yourself because then yes, you might slip, but if you have accountability, then you know, like, especially if you have a mentor and they know what they're doing, they'll tell you to rest. And then when you're better they'll they'll check in on you and say, Hey, are you back to working out? So you have no way out. Yeah. And you it know, makes sense. But you know, you guys like, don't try to go through it alone because then you're, you're exposed to more danger. When you have accountability and you have a support system, it's almost like you have a safety net. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, so you can double whammy those, right? For one, make sure you have people you can be accountable to who are going to be good at holding you accountable. Most people are just not good at holding people accountable because it makes them feel uncomfortable. Did you do your shit? That's a hard question to ask. Hey, did you do what you said you were going to do? It's hard. It's annoying sometimes. Yeah, and, and, and you can double that with an intention where you're like, this is my workout for the day. In your mind, you're like, I'm still doing a workout. It's just not what you would have done. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just a walk down the, maybe it's a slow ass walk down the street. Maybe it's training your mind by, you know, reading instead. Maybe it's stretching. Yeah. When you, know? you feel like shit stretching though, just but it's like a lot, but it's something that's like extreme illness though, like right. which happens ever. So I don't know. Everybody's different. So that's not a thing to say, but you know, it like, if you're feeling under the weather, but you can still move, like if it really is getting to you, then, you know, doing some kind of light stretching or a walk is not a stressor. It's not a stressor. Yeah. You know, so it then just depends on like, what is my workout going to be today? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the second point, guilt. Never go, never work out after you've eaten a lot because you want to break the pattern of you can get away with the extra calories or whatever by working out. Wait, wait, let's clarify that. You can eat a lot before you work out. I mean like... But a, it's don't work out to make... To, re to reward eating like shit. That's not a reward. It's like a punishment. Don't work yes. out as a punishment for what you ate. Mm -hmm. How many of you have done that? I've done it. Me? I used to climb the Stairmaster all the time. All I would mm -hmm. think about is how much of the fucking cookies and peanut butter and bread and ice cream with cereal on top I could get rid of from last night. Yep. True story. Same. What were my go-tos? Those fucking peanut butter pretzel bites? Oof. Jesus, take the wheel. I would smash those. A poor cereal on top of ice cream. Put some milk in there. Yeah, when we why. started dating, she introduced me to that. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? You've never done this? Um, my dad would always put milk on ice cream. I think I started doing that because of him. But anyways, you know, it's it, fitness, like, it, no workout should be done as a punishment. Mm-hmm. Because the intention is so um, broke, yeah, that you actually don't get it, anything from it, and you can never work out as hard as you can eat. And what you're teaching your brain is that it's okay to eat like shit as long as you work out afterwards, which is not true, because there there's so much that goes into eating like shit that's more than calories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you guys are stuck in that too, if you're like feeling like, you know, you're always doing your workouts to like make up for what you ate, you need to have a chat with us because you need to get out of the cycle. Mm -hmm. There's it's so much that goes into it. Yeah. It's a trap. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get out, somebody has to help you out. 
somebody has to help you out. And I want to be the somebody. So, um, if that's you, then I need you to send me an email at Aaron at Aaron and Siri .com If you're serious, if you're serious, because I'm serious. And then the other part is injury. You know, injury teaches you discipline from a, a, from a new perspective. And injuries are nothing but an opportunity to really learn the entire 360 holistic approach to training. It's not just about going hard. It's about the yin and the yang. It's about, you know, focusing on mobility and flexibility so that you can work out hard. Or focusing on strengthening if you're a hypermobile so that you'll be able to to go harder if you're injured it's because you know a, a joint a tendon or a muscle was compromised to some degree okay and that means that you know like you weren't following the entire model to what the what we call the kinetic chain you know needs in order to operate at full performance so if you're, an, if you're injured, something is compromised, which means that it's now time to hone in on what has been compromised until it gets better, and then harmonizing what has been compromised with what you want to do. Most people, when they start training, they either follow whatever the mainstream whatever tells them to, which or is right. burn more calories, or whatever they prefer, Without okay. focusing on their weaknesses, but you know, in order to create an entire 360 like functional strong machine, you have to focus on what you like, but also on your weaknesses. Your, your, you know, training has to be safe, fun, and effective. At the beginning, it has to be more on the funner side. That's why we dance a lot in the burn zone because we're basically just trying to get you hooked into working out because we're like, shit, if we're not gonna get them hooked you know, hooked into working out, then They're what not, the heck? They won't be consistent. Right. It's like, you got to keep training for the rest of your life. Nobody starts to work out so that they stop. Yeah. Right. But you know, like things change as you evolve. There's more things to focus on. It's now, it's no longer just about fun. It's also about learning how to move and learning what you need to incorporate in order to move well, because if you don't move well, then you can only load so much. You said mainstream. I'm like, I don't even know what is mainstream fitness. Main, main, I don't mainstream even fitness is do a bunch of cardio. I, okay. I think that more so people just get a random compilation of videos that they watch where it's like one thing from here, one thing from there, one thing from there, one thing. There's no rhyme or reason to it, any of it. It's just like... Oh, I saw this workout video and then that workout video over there and that and then the, they don't stick to any one thing. It's just like a random com, like compiled mess of random workouts. Um and then there's no there's no progression in that. Um I don't remember what else I was going to say. I get so excited when I see people buying the Burn Zone 4 because what that tells me is you have been so consistent. And then when they get into the UTC, you guys, we've had a lot more people start joining the Underground Training Club. It's amazing because we're, I was looking for my phone. We're talking on it. Like, show them the app. It's so much fun. I'm totally going to shamelessly plug this right now and I'm going to make you so excited for it so that by the time you get there, you're like, a duh, there's no other choice. But it is so fun because it's like Facebook group meets a workout app done by Aaron and Sarit. That is and we're an extension. Doing with you. That is an extension of the burn zone. And these are the actual workouts that we Ooh, follow. You put GIFs on today's workout. Yeah, dude. Look at Bah! I felt so pumped up after today's workout. My arms were like, gah. Yeah. Cause we had Single arm dumbbell bench presses, air bikes, hand release T push ups, and ring dips. Dude, my arms were jacked mm -hmm. afterwards. It hurt so good. But 
Dude, you get to fist bump people. Look how many results we have today. Seven. I know it's backwards, but seven people have Let's so far them. submitted their scores. And yeah, you, Janelle, and, and you, some work. And you can click and you can fist bump. Look, there's Coach Lauren. Boom, I'm going to fist bump her. Bam, from your phone. And you can leave comments on their workout scores, and you can leave comments on like the workout hey, let's fist itself. Bump all of them. Yeah, we will, but but we're on a show right now, so let's fist bump them afterwards. Uh, let's fist them afterwards. Oh gosh, <laughs> that's what happens. When I the couldn't help myself. Um, anyways, if you want underground training club, go to erinandsarit.com. On the little top, it says underground training. Just click on there, or and, or erinandsarit.com and forward slash. Underground dash training. Damn, L Dub, with those 35s. I know, dude. I'm like, shh. Dude, you guys are beasts. It's you want to get wicked strong and, and, and cool? Yeah, dude. Janice, the newest member to the underground training. Club. No, Beth Lewis. Oh, Janice was the last week. This week we have Steph Duarte and Beth Lewis. True. Oh my gosh, you guys are awesome. Oh, thank you, Stacy, for posting that link. Um, hey, and you know what? There are qualifications on there. So if you uh, haven't done the burn zone, you're like, I don't even know what that is, but I've been doing fitness for a really long time and you meet all of the standards, then you can join it without doing the burn zone. If you have finished all four rounds of the burn zone, but you don't meet all of the qualifications, then you need to run it by us. Yeah, if you don't if you don't meet the qualifications, you need to just do the burn zone. You need to do more burn zone. More burn zoning. Or you need to be like, hey, which ones do I not meet? And then that's your that's your new goal. That's your focus is to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, um We hope you found value from today's conversation. Look, you guys. You already know. You already know that we, all of us, you and us are on a mission to transform the lives of millions through the same movement, nutrition, lifestyle, and financial habits that have transformed ours. Look, you guys, if you found value from today's conversation, if you see your friends just not knowing how to train, training like shit, following the same workout that they've been following for five years and asking you, Beth, why am I still looking fat? Or why am I not getting stronger? Look, dude, it's because you ain't doing it right. All they gotta do is just join the bright side. So please do us a huge, a huge favor. If you found value from today's conversation, just go ahead and share the love, spread the love. This is how we organically grow from you guys. What? Coach Lauren just fist bumped me on my, my bench press today. I saw a notification. <laughs> Dopamine, pew. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Sari is right. And you guys, if you have friends that want like an awesome workout program, just send them to the free one. Send them to the rise above that you did. Improveusolutions.com forward slash fun. It's fun for a reason. Yeah, you don't have to go to the gym to have a badass workout. We've already proven it to you guys. Just send them there. Just send them to the just free one. Just do something. Just let them taste the juice. Let them taste the juice. Yeah. So but okay. anyways, thank you guys for showing up for yourself this morning. It was great to see you guys here. We hope that this added lots of value today. We hope that you have a kick-ass taco Tuesday, toe Tuesday, whatever Tuesday you want it to be. This is your world. Um, we will see you guys tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. Bye, Bye. guys.